Hey guys, welcome to the View Cryptos channel. Today I want to talk to you about CBDCs, the XRP Ledger and the Stellar Network and how XRP and XLM can rise in price really fast if used by central banks. So we are going to look at Project Helvit here. Uh, it is about settling tokenized assets in central bank money. Project Helvitia, an experiment between the Bank for International Settlements Innovation Hub Swiss Center, the Swiss National Bank and the Financial Market Infrastructure Operator 6, successfully shows the feasibility of integrating tokenized assets and central bank money. The project demonstrates the functional feasibility and legal robustness of settling tokenized assets with a wholesale CBDC and with linking a DLT platform to existing payment systems in a near-life setup. The experiment should not be interpreted as an indication that the SMB will issue a wholesale CBDC. Of course, they want to be prepared because, in my opinion, they know that in the near future they will have to issue CBDC. So, uh, now I will uh, let you listen to Benoit Curie, who is ex uh, explaining actually in more details about the project Helvetia. Project Helvetia investigates how central bank money can be used for settlement uh, in a world where securities and other financial assets migrate from today's centralized financial market infrastructures to new so called decentralized or tokenized platforms for trading and post-trading activities. One proof of concept relies on wholesale CBDC, whereas another proof of, proof of concept is based on a link to the existing central bank system for wholesale payments, that is the real-time gross settlement system. Through public-private collaboration and experimentation, Project Helvetia facilitates a better understanding of both technical issues and policy implications of innovations uh, in this sphere. Our philosophy at the BIS Innovation Hub is very much moving fast and not breaking things. Uh, we want to understand better, but we also want to understand in a deep way what are the uh, technological and policy consequences uh, of, a, of any given technology. Uh, and finally, let me clarify that um, this project does not look into general purpose or retail CBDC. It's, it's all about wholesale or interbank uh, CBDC. I wish, uh, as a conclusion, I wish to thank our partners, the Swiss National Bank and SIX uh, for excellent teamwork. I hope the report offers useful insight for the central banking community and for the interested public. I'm, I will be happy to answer any question. I want to thank the media representative for the interest. The SNB is keeping very close track of technological innovation in the financial sector and is working actively within the central banking community and with other partners to assess and shape relevant development in the digital space. We are not pushing innovation for innovation's sake, but rather because going forward, we have to innovate simply to remain effective in fulfilling our central bank mandate. The collaboration with the BIS Innovation Hub with one of its centers in Switzerland offers a unique opportunity for the SNB to keep track of those developments and Project Helvetia is a perfect example of this. Why did we do Project Helvetia? The, project, the private sector is investing heavily in distributed ledger technology, DLT, and tokenization. If DLT and tokenization can deliver significant improvements over existing technologies, central banks must understand the potential impact on the financial system. What have we done? In Project Elvetia, we investigated two approaches to integrating central bank money into a DLT-based financial market infrastructure. We explored both approaches in the form of proofs of concept, collaborating with SIX, and in particular the SIX Digital Exchange, SDX. The first phase of Project Elvetia has been a success. The key success was the excellent collaboration between the BIS Innovation Hub, SIX, and the SMB. So they say that 
the, the experiment was a success and uh, they were partnering with Six Digital Exchange and this is the network of Six Digital Exchange they are partnering with uh, the World Economic Forum, Global Digital Finance and Ethereum uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and very important with R3 and actually I want to show you this the SDX CSD entity Six Digital Exchange runs on DLT platform based on CORD from R3. The platform provides issuance, settlement, this is very important, settlement, asset servicing and custody for tokenized assets. SDX supports two different trading options. On exchange on book trading with multilateral settlement and off book and off exchange uh, over the counter trading with bilateral settlement. Trades settle according to delivery versus payment model in contrast to the existing market infrastructure of six for equities there is no CCP as after orders have been matched trades settle instantaneously and simultaneously. With this atomic trading and settlement settlement is instant with settlement and replacement cost risks avoided. So this is very important and I want now to show you actually uh, a short presentation from uh, R3 on how uh, the R3 Corda Settler is working and settling using the XRP Ledger. So uh, let's take a look. The following animation will show a network of participants using Corda Settler. Company A and Company B are the counterparties. They are using a notary service on Corda, and they both have access to nodes in other payment systems. For this demo, XRP is the chosen payments route. This animation will be available as a click-through on r3.com. From a transaction on Corda, Company B has an obligation to pay Company A $100. As the beneficiary, Company A can choose the currency in which they'd like to be paid. In this case, Company A chooses XRP. To update the obligation, Company A will get the current exchange rate from an exchange rate oracle and then update the obligation with the new currency and amount. Having made these changes, Company A obtains a signature from the notary service and distributes the obligation to Company B. Corda Settler also allows users to add additional terms, such as the desired payment address on the XRP network. Company A updates the obligation again and distributes it. Company B is now ready to settle this obligation, and so initiates a transaction from their XRP node. This obligation can be settled in one or many transactions. Company B gets a payment submission confirmation from the XRP network, updates the obligation with the transaction hash, and sends it to Company A and the Settlement Oracle. Now the Settlement Oracle knows which transaction referenced query for completion. The Settlement Oracle queries the XRP network for the status of transactions with the specified transaction ID. When Company B's payment has been confirmed, the Settlement Oracle marks the obligation settled, obtains a notary signature, and distributes the updated obligation to Company A and Company B. The obligation is now settled and the counterparties have completed the second leg of their transaction. This has shown an important link between assets and applications on Corda and other settlement systems. We're excited to enable additional settlement rails over the next few months. Thanks for watching. That will be the next stage. So in that sense, the, the first stage final uh, results are here. They are released today in the report. And now we go into a second stage. So maybe before giving the, the word uh, back to the BIS, um, the question was also, is it likely to increase uh, uh, the issuance of a wholesale CBDC eventually? Because we know we're, there's no commitment at this point. Look, the two things that need to happen. First, DLT must prove itself as a new technology for the financial market infrastructure. If DLT delivers not only the efficiency gains that uh, it believes it can, but yet also delivers on the safety and on the resilience to the financial market and also the interoperability 
not only one side cross-border, and we know there's a lot of emphasis put on now creating cross-border interoperability, but also cross-interoperability between the, the digital exchanges and the, convention, the conventional, the existing technology. This is one thing that needs to happen in order for wholesale CBDC to even become something conceivable. The second thing is we need to understand Central bank money is needed in the system. We know it nowadays. Central bank reserves are a very helpful uh, means of settling uh, large value transaction. It's really increased, buttressed the system. Now, how do you bring it? What is the best way to bring it into this new system? Does it require wholesale CBDC? Is it better? Where are the benefits? Where are the risks? Or are there other systems that are just as good or that are better on certain aspects? This is what still needs to be understood to be understood and this is why we are very committed to the work to better understanding the the uh, the, uh, the the implication for the broader financial system from a monetary policy perspective from a financial stability perspective and also from a broadly speaking uh, uh, payment system perspective so basically they are saying that dot and blockchain technology has to prove itself as really secure really efficient and scalable in order for the central banks to start using blockchains like the xrp ledger and the stellar network for issuing central bank digital currencies and actually we're seeing exactly that ripple and stellar are proving that uh, their blockchains are the best choices for uh, central banks to issue CBDCs because they were created with uh, the idea to be used for payments you know that on Stellar and that on the XRP Ledger you can issue currencies so on the XRP Ledger all currencies other than XRP can be represented in the XRP Ledger as issued currencies uh, on the Stellar network the ability to issue assets is a core feature of Stellar in a few simple operations, you can create Stellar Network tokens. The possibilities are endless. Any asset can be tokenized and once tokenized, transferred or traded over the Stellar Network quickly and cheaply. And this is very important that transactions on both uh, blockchains are really very fast and very cheap. So they are basically free. <laughs> and uh, we are seeing that uh, Ripple and Stellar are proving that their blockchains are really the best choices by uh, actually using XRP and XLM in cross-border payments. We are seeing uh, Ripple partnering with MoneyGram and MoneyGram using XRP in cross-border payments in different corridors. And uh, also we are seeing Stellar partnering with for example, Lightnet Group in Asia, uh, they, they have uh, stable coins operating on the Stellar Network that are used in Africa, Brazil, South America. So they're proving the use case of uh, blockchain technology in the cross-border payments world. And now let's listen to Ben Curie, who is going to talk about uh, their, their next experiment with DOT for cross-border payments. So thank you for the question. And let me answer shortly to the first part, which is what are the other use cases uh, of wholesale CBDC apart from settling uh, tokenized uh, assets, which we do here. Um, I think for us at the BIS, there is one very obvious uh, possible use case for wholesale CBDC, uh, and that's about international settlement, uh, and particularly uh, FX settlement, um, which uh, today is done on a PVP basis um, across currencies, uh, and um, one possible avenue would be to use wholesale CBDC also to do a, a, a cross-currency settlement, uh, and that's what we're going to start experimenting as a, as a next stage. And uh, of course, the BIS has a particular uh, interest in that discussion, uh, given its uh, international role. And that can also contribute to the um, achievement uh, of the uh, G20 agenda. As some of you may know, the G20 finance ministers and governors 
agreed in October on a uh, on an action plan to improve cross-border payments. And there are many dimensions to this action plan, which is going to be implemented by the Financial Stability Board and by the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructures. Uh, but one dimension of it is a uh, possible use of CBDC uh, to uh, improve cross-border payments. Uh, and that's the one we are going to particularly uh, look into together with CPMI. It's open. Uh, yes, just a more general question. Uh, when do you expect that a major central bank uh, would release a CBDC and what would that mean if, for example, China would be really uh, stepping forward with such a plan? Look, I, I, guess, I guess the only possible answer to that question is that central banks are deciding for themselves uh, based on their uh, local considerations, environments. Um, and so the BIS cannot speak uh, on their behalf. Uh, we are cle clearly seeing uh, work on CBDC being stepped up. Um, we had a survey earlier this year um, saying that uh, Across the world, 80% uh, of central banks were working on CBDC, um, and 10% uh, of central banks were already uh, engaged in, uh, in pilot projects, such as People Bank of China, uh, which you mentioned. And that, that was nearly one year ago. I'm pretty sure that the numbers would be even higher today. And clearly, the, the pandemics has uh, um, stepped up this work. Um, because it has given a boost generally to digital payments and contactless payments all throughout the world. So things are moving faster. Uh, now uh, central, only central banks can answer for themselves. So at the end, of course, when asked uh, when major central banks are going to issue CBDCs, Bina Curie couldn't answer this question because only the central banks uh, can uh, can announce uh, if and when they are going to issue CBDCs, but I think that he has the knowledge of uh, which central banks are going to be first. Of course, he can't uh, uh, he can't say, but uh, it is going to be really interesting to see. I think next year which banks are going to move first with issuing CBDCs. I think that the European Central Banks a bank is going to be one of the first uh, major central banks that is going to uh, announce the issuing of their CBDC. You know that China has the first mover advantage in this area and also a big threat to Europe and to the, uh, to the world, to the other central banks is uh, Facebook and Facebook's uh, Libra because uh, they are going to launch their uh, uh, Libra project in January. I think that they are going to change the name. I'm not really sure, but uh, they are going to launch with a uh, limited feature, actually, only a USD stable coin as a beginning. So, of course, uh, the European Cent Central Bank doesn't want to be left behind and they they want to <laughs> they're going to to try to modernize uh, their financial system and the euro so it's going to be really interesting to see what is going to happen okay guys thank you very much for watching please like subscribe and share be safe and see you next time